I would like to start with a fictitious story uh, because there's going to be a story over here. So before that, we'd have a f story. Uh, <laughs> definitely. So that's why I'm uh, having the disclaimer, it's a fictitious story. So there was an ERP conference. You can see ERP Next conference in uh, 2007, okay? And uh, yeah, thank you so much. So in this conference, like uh, they wanted one developer to come and uh, talk. And this developer was like, he was very lazy. He was, a, he was a purely developer. He never wanted to face the people. So somehow uh, the organizers, the ERP guys convinced that he should come and talk. Okay, so when he came to the uh, podium and he's like, he's standing over there and says, he asked the audience, so you guys know what I'm going to speak, right? So they're like, uh, yeah. So he's like, oh, if you already know what I'm going to speak, what is the reason that I should be speaking over here? And then he goes away. So, and the next year, the conference again comes, and somehow these guys get him over there, and he stands over there, and he's like, this time, audience says, everybody is ready, and the organizers have, on the Telegram group, replied, uh, told everyone what, what they should be replying when he asks such questions, if he asks. And again, he asks, do you know what I'm going to say? And this time, the audience says, no, 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 we don't know. He's like, oh. Such an audience who doesn't know anything, I don't want to be talking to such an ignorant audience. And he again leaves. So he's again trying to have his escape ways. And then the third time, again, they pitch him up and he comes. And this time, everybody is completely ready. And he has, then he asks again, do you know what I'm going to say? What I'm going to talk on? So half of them say, yes, we know. And half of them say, we don't know. And he's like, those who know, please tell those who don't know. And then he again walks away. <laughs> OK, so that's the end of the story. And uh, do you guys know what I am going to talk? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to walk away anyways. <laughs> so that was just the joke. So this is a story uh, of 18 implementations uh, that we have done through our company. It looks a little weird also, and uh, people were catching uh, up all, all along and were asking, is this fictitious? No, it's real. So <laughs> it's a real story how we have done it. Uh, so I'm Hamza, and basically I'm a CTO of uh, Standard Touch. Standard Touch, uh, actually I started it when I finished my engineering. I'm M-Tech Medical Electronics, so, and uh, I started in 2007. So I'm basically born and brought up in Saudi, so when I was in Saudi and I, when I finished my engineering, I started uh, doing uh, uh, this business. So slowly we went into web business, and then uh, we started other domains. So we started with our own services. So we had a lot of failures and all, and uh, to be very frank, I was like a geek guy, okay? So I used to make products, whatever I see, I'll, uh, I'll make Google of jobs, okay? So I make Sheikh jobs for Saudi, I made Sheikh jobs, where you get all the jobs aggregated, it was on Drupal, we programmed it very well, and then nobody was visiting, and then we are like, oh, okay, fine, we don't have the marketing skill. So that is from where we began. So later on, we had e-commerce, then we added Rupert Process, R RPA, and then digital marketing and another, and our latest child in our company is ERP, it's still in like the growth stage, so it's two, two and a half years since we are into ERP next. So, and we have done a lot of customers, we have a very good base, and now we have a very good marketing team also. So we have a marketing team, we have office in Saudi also, physical office, and we have a team in Dubai, and plus uh, India, we have a very good marketing, our CEO is a very good marketing guy, so actually he should have been here, but I am here talking instead of him. So, this is the story. <coughs> It's a story of the 18 implementations. There are two things in this. There is, you can say, a little bit luck. There's a strategy, and there is another thing that, uh, uh, the first interaction there, the story, I'll start from here. I'll start from when I heard, because I was asked when you heard about our, uh, ERP and to present that. So it was 2012, that was like uh, that time. Uh, Ashish Sinha used to run a startup at, uh, newsletter. I don't know how many of you know that, plugged in and unplugged. So I used to subscribe, I was a subscriber to that and I read about uh, ERP Next at that time. But frankly, uh, neither did I have the bandwidth or neither, I didn't feel it so strong that I would go into it. But that was the first time I interacted. And uh, we started our division in 2020 actually. We were trying before that to start but it was a little difficult frankly. Because uh, you know how tough it's, getting into ERP, this is like, uh, when I post a job about ERP, I hardly get any replies, and this is like I posted it around last year, 
for I think before that means somewhere around 11, 12 months, and I got 10 applications, none of them were from ERP. They knew Python or something, but uh, I couldn't recruit any one of them. So, and it got a little bit easier. This is what I posted two weeks ago, and I got around uh, some people who are really into ERP also, and uh, Frappe also, but still, uh, yeah, we are into the process. So, we had uh, two implementations. One was for uh, the a book uh, publishing house, they wanted the whole cost center, everything. There were a lot of things in that, including connection with their uh, uh, e-commerce website. So it was a uh, different project. And the other one was, uh, so uh, it was regarding, uh, I think, uh, the company management and the whole company itself. So we had two implementations until, this is what I would say, like why say stitch on time saves nine, right? So a hit on time gets 18, that's what I would say. So that's what happened with us, and we were very lucky, I think. And, uh, and ERP Next actually got ZATKA approved. ZATKA is this is a Zakat and Taxation Authority in Saudi Arabia. So uh, I think it got ZATKA, ZATKA approved, and I think that's thanks to Akhilam, the company is here, and Shivam, who had worked hard on it. And I think that's a big handoff to them that they went to the ministry and they got this done. So, and another thing is, if you see over here, this is the Zatka website. If you search for ERP Next, you see Accurate Systems. So, we have the gentleman from Accurate Systems. Uh, he has come from all the way from Saudi. Uh, so, I think a big, big hat to Mohammad Reda also. He sponsored the whole thing, and someone from our Pados Mulk uh, actually developed it, and he gave it free to the whole community back. This is the best part, I really enjoy it. He made it and he could have actually enjoyed it himself, but he gave it back to the community and in fact kept a webinar for all the people who are on ERP, how they can take it ahead. So this is where we hit in. So we did 18 implementations in a month and that was like 14 December was the last date given by the Saudi government. So this is where you can play with time, okay? Well, last date given by the government that you need to have e-invoicing. And that e-invoicing that was developed by Mohammed Reza from Accurate Systems and that got approved by uh, uh, Akhilam Technologies, and so we pitched it, and what we did is like, we knew 4th December was the deadline. So this is the time we are like, everybody, okay, whoever had uh, the generic ERPs, uh, homemade ERPs, or the whatever they had, or even if they didn't have ERP, they had to go for e-invoicing. So there was no option. So, and we had to pitch at that time. So what we did is, one thing is we had a good client base, another thing is, we started investing in Google AdWords, okay? And uh, our biggest, uh, like, uh, you, if you see, we started with a small budget and later we reached up to 40,000 per day we, start, uh, we were spending because we knew 40,000 rupees per day will come back one day or the other because if we get those implementations. So we were ranking, like, for e-invoicing in Saudi Arabia, we were ranking second because Zoho always kept betting us, I don't know how and what they were doing. So they were always on the top, but uh, we were second and see, we somehow got uh, over here. And we, we, want, we, we wanted to have selected customers because we can't go to Zoho's level of pricing. Zoho had very less pricing. So what we did over here is like the strategy was, <coughs> yeah, the strategy was to simplify uh, ERP Next as a very, very micro level solution, first of all. First, you give it as a micro level solution. So maybe over here, we, we give it as an e-invoicing solution. So first it started as an e-invoicing government uh, accepted solutions. That is where we hit it, okay? And once you get that, people start coming to you. And if, suppose I'll give you another example over here. If you go to any hospital and you're like, I'll give you a whole ERP system that will be, work very well, they will not be very comfortable to change everything, the whole e-invoicing, the whole invoicing systems, the whole things. But if you say, just tell them, okay, I'll help you with the outpatient. And if you like it slowly, you can make the entry. So I think the micro-module uh, method always works. Like in the book uh, client also, that book client that we had, right? Book publishing house. First, we just give them the accounting module. And from accounting, then slowly they had the cost center, then the, they integrated with the website. So all the other modules came later on. The whole production system and all, they came later on. But we just pitched for one module. If you tell them to change the whole module, they'll get scared because they have a whole system running. So if you want to pitch, you need to pitch for uh, a very small part and which is which they will not be actually scared and once they develop confidence of working with you they'll say okay fine so this is like uh, how it was going with us 
first we had this module, uh, we uh, hid all the other modules because uh, either they will get confused and uh, we will have so many queries that we won't be able to answer because you know how people do, right? They go into this and they're like, hello, have you, we are not able to understand what is this. So this was happening. And <clears throat> another thing is like uh, this is the VAT report that used to get presented. And upselling modules and implementation, I just mentioned, right? So once you do that, you can upsell any module. And what happened is, frankly, means when uh, these companies by themselves, they started coming to us. And they are like, we need one more module, can you have this also? So sales and uh, I think distribution and uh, this part, we got started getting customers means in the same field and through referrals also. There are some more people who want to join us and we don't have the bandwidth, frankly, to take any more because these 18 themselves are expanding now. So, and we have like around a very small team, around 10, 12 developers, and in that, uh, few of them are working on ERP. So, we are not able to uh, accommodate all of them. And I think the whole community has been very helpful. I think most of the guys have been in touch for something or the other, for some customization or other. My team has been in touch, actually, frankly. Nasir has been in touch. So, I thank the community also for having these 18 implementations in a month. It's not us alone. <clears throat> Another advantage about ERP was like, there was this company, they had a single uh, VAT number registration, but they had different companies, that happens, I don't know how it's done. But they wanted, when they are filing the VAT, right, it should be done with one, uh, means uh, uh, together. So ERP next was the only one in the market that was able to do because they had multi-company option in it. So if you see, they have so many companies in one ERP, 14 companies in one ERP, and this is what we implemented. 14 companies and they are like uh, Nobla H, Nobla S and then different, different companies. They all were there in different uh, one ERP. So this is another advantage that uh, we had while implementing. I think this is a really added advantage. And uh, what actually reduced our time, uh, this is one question actually you guys must be wondering okay, how we did it so fast, was Frappe Cloud. What we did is we made a template uh, ERP next, okay? So we got it ready invoicing ready, all the guidelines ready, we removed all the modules, everything was set as we want, and then using Frappe Cloud, every time a customer came, the, uh, the team actually imported it directly using this new site option, there is an option to restore from an existing site. So we restored it from an existing site, whatever we wanted. So it was something like SaaS, okay, but we had to do it from our end, uh, it was not aut completely automated, so it was something like SaaS, so it was, it was like something that would usually take around uh, 10 days to have the whole system running was hardly, I think, taking two to three days for a customer to get deployed. So that is one thing. And uh, I think uh, we finished all the uh, 18 implementations within uh, the month uh, as promised. And after that, now we are getting the further implementations from them. So. This is what did it, and there is another story, I think Umair already talked about it, about the white labeling of ERP. So there is another issue with the white labeling is like, people are like, Bhai tum bhag gai to, what will we do if you run away? Where is the code? Okay, so this is where actually, suppose this is like how standard touch ERP or standard touch white labeling looks. So it's in the name actually. So people write, if you tell them it is ERP next, they'll be like, okay, it's open source. And some people, like uh, hospitals, right, uh, when we visit them, they don't understand open source. They, if you tell them, aapko source code milega, you'll have the source code, they're like, ah, if we had the source code, it's more than enough. Because if you run or if you're not there or if you're not performing well, we can get it done by someone else. So this is another thing that is really, really good to pitch because not everybody understands open source, especially people who are on the other side, right? We are technical guys, we understand open source. So we need to tell them that this is something where it's open source, you get the source code, you keep it with yourself, and if you don't like me, get someone else and get the work done. And there are so many people in the community and it's ERP next is a big word. So that is in the name actually. So it's the, that is how actually more people got convinced to go with ERP next. Because they knew they will not be stuck with us if we are going away somewhere. <clears throat> so that's the open source plus and why ERP next uh, fared better than low cost local solutions and all? It's like I, like I mentioned, uh, the multi-company option uh, that it had plus the open source and the ability to scale it up to a uh, uh, whole uh, ERP, right? That was lacking in Zoho. Even though Zoho made maximum number of sales in Saudi during e-invoicing, but still I think uh, ERP next fared better in, because at least for medium-sized companies, it did much, much better. And uh, 
In ERP Next, again, I would like to say, yeah, everybody is a family, someone sponsors, and, uh, and, and that develops, and everybody uses it. And this is what I believe, and I think uh, we all should be doing, and giving back to the community so that we all can enjoy, and we all can grow, and help Frappe grow. Thank you so much.